Hi guys, welcome to your new and improved experience of taking notes at school. Um, let's see, I guess I'll go into a little bit about how this works. So obviously you found me on YouTube and all you have to do is just follow in order the notes. You're more than welcome to go on ahead if you want to take more notes, like if you know you're going to be busy the next day, you could go ahead and watch the next one. You can, uh, before a test or a quiz, re-watch videos to help you study. You can take as much or as little notes as you want, but you do have to take notes because I will be checking them to make sure that you are actually writing things down. You don't have to write down things word for word that I do. You can just put down vocab terms and the definitions. You could draw pictures. You could do whatever you want. Um, I definitely suggest writing on one side of the page and then leaving the other side of the page for questions. So if you're writing something down and you're like, well, I don't get that, write that question on the other side because the next day what we're going to do is we're going to go over questions and just make sure that we understand everything. Okay. So this one, the, this first notes taking is going to be kind of new for you, new for me. And, uh, so just do do what you feel comfortable with. Tomorrow we'll talk about it and you guys give me suggestions as to ways I can improve or things you'd like to see different on here. Okay. So take a look at this first page here. You can see that you are in biology class and uh, these are a lot of the words. If you look all over that you are going to be learning and uh, hopefully knowing a lot about. So biology is one of the biggest words on here because that is the class that you're in but biology is uh, under the greater category of science. There's lots of different sciences out there. Biology, the study of living things, is going to be what we focus on. So let's take a look at what it means to be alive. So biology, so you can see I've got text over here underlined. Usually if it's underlined, that means it's a vocab word you probably should know. I have the definition here. Now the definition will either be in my own words or in the book's words. So you should be comfortable enough to be able to turn the books into your own words or to take mine and make it sound more scientific, put it in the book's terms. So don't memorize things word for word because as many different people are there are in the classroom, that's how many different definitions of a word you can get. And so you want to know the basic idea behind it so that way no matter who says it, you know what it is they're talking about. So I started with uh, some pictures of things that we study, may or may not study in biology. And so I wanted you to take a look at all these and figure out which one of these is alive or not. And if it is, what is it? Or even if it, what it is, uh, if it isn't alive, what is it? So let's start over here. Is that alive? Do you even know what it is? It looks microscopic. Yeah, it's real small. Um, it lives in the ocean. If that, or you, it can be found in the ocean. It can even be found in your pool. These are called diatoms. And now, should you write that down? No, not really. Because I'm just seeing if you know what's alive or not. So I do give you a lot of information, uh, some of which is very important. Usually if it's written down here, it's important. This is just purely for your information. So these are little diatoms or single celled uh, little algae like creatures that live in the water and could also be found in your pool. All right, what about that? What do you think that is? That is a slime mold. Is that alive? Are molds alive? Yes, they are. What about that? What is that? It looks like a brain, a brain that crawls. You're close. It is called a brain coral. It is alive. It's, it's an animal. What about this little smiley face right there? Well, of course that is. That's a spider. I like him. Here's his head. Here's his cephalothorax. Here's his abdomen. I like him because he's got a smiley face. And what about all that stuff up there? Is that alive? Yeah, that's bacteria. So all these things I showed you are alive. Now, how do I know? This thing doesn't have a mouth or a heart. So what makes things alive? Well, a lot of what we're going to be studying belong in the animal kingdom. We're animals, even though you may not believe it. Uh, we're part of the animal kingdom. And there are eight things, eight characteristics that creatures have to exhibit in order to be considered alive. 
So what you want to do is on your note, make a little title. So like if this is your notebook like that, and here's the title, I would put this right here. What makes something alive? Maybe add the date to it as well would be helpful. And then uh, you'll put one, two, three, four, whatever. And then I have some examples down here. You do not need to draw pictures. I just have them there for visuals to make it easier to understand. Okay, and again, any questions, write it on the other side and then we can go over it tomorrow. Okay, what do you need to be able to have or do to be considered alive? First thing is, is you need to have cells. Okay, so do you need to write this all down word for word? All living things are made of cells? No, you could put one, have cells, and that would be just as fine. Now, depending on what kind of creature you are, you are either unicellular or multicellular. Now, you probably know from the word UD cycle that that means one. So if you were made of only one cell, like this little thingy right there, then you would be considered alive. If you are made of two or more cells, you have multiple cells, you are multicellular, so you are made of many cells like that little creature right there. Now here's what's cool about these notes. I'm gonna go ahead and move on to the next slide. But if you're not ready, guess what you can do? Pause me. Go ahead, you know you wanna. Hit pause, write down everything you need, and then hit play again. You missed something or forgot to spell it or whatever, rewind, it's all good. You don't get to do this to your teachers in class. I'm sure you want to pause them often, but uh, that's what's nice about doing it this way. Okay, number two. So, of the, remember there's eight things that you need to be able to do to be considered alive. Here's number two. You need to be able to reproduce. You need to make babies. Now, how you make the babies is up to the organism. You have two ways of doing this. You have sexual reproduction and asexual reproduction. Sexual reproduction means there's a male and a female of the species, and the two of them get together to make their babies. So usually it involves an egg and a sperm, and that makes a baby. Okay, now this works for all animals. Everything in the animal kingdom does this. Sometimes the animal can be both the male and the female at the same time and get another individual pregnant at the, and it's really weird, like snails. They're boys and girls at the same time, so they can each get each other pregnant at the same time. Very strange. And then we have asexual reproduction, which is only there's one parent. Now, it doesn't mean that he's the boy and the girl. It just means that what they do is they take a chunk of their body. This is a hydra right down here. Here's his little mouth. These are little tentacles. He's kind of like an upside down jellyfish. Here, his stomach is inside. Well, this little hydra decided it wanted a baby, so it decided to grow itself one. Now, so there's no eggs and sperm. It's just the cells start to go through mitosis to make a bud. That's what we call that down there, that's a bud. And then it just pops off, and there you go, there's your kid. Or cloning is another example. There's a species of lizards that is all female, and when they're ready to have a baby, one of their cells just decides to split off and go through mitosis multiple times and become a baby. But those babies are clones to the original mom. So, very strange. Okay, third thing we need to do is contain DNA. DNA stands for deoxyribonucleic acid. So there's the D, the N, and the A. Now we're going to spend a whole chapter on this stuff later, so you don't need to know so much rather than just how to spell it. So if you break it up, deoxyribonucleic acid, then it's not so bad. So, But when you look at the whole big word all at once, you're like, ah, it's too much. So break it up in little chunks makes it a lot easier. So you need to have DNA. You need to be able to grow and develop. Now I know that sounds like the same thing, but it's not. Growing is just getting larger. So if you eat a lot of junk food and your belly gets bigger, you are growing. But developing is when you mature into different forms. So like a, um, well, in terms of humans, a child form and adult form look completely different. Okay, there's obvious differences between adult males and females than the younger counterparts. But in terms of, say, like a frog, a frog starts out as a tadpole, okay? 
tadpole. Looks like a key. And then he ends up <laughs> looking like a frog. Well, you know what I mean. I really can draw, whether you believe it or not. So developing is turning into a completely different form. Growing is just getting bigger. So the tadpole starts out this big, then it gets this big, and then it gets this big. That's growing. But then he turns into a frog. That's developing. Okay? So you're growing from the time you're born to the time you're 10 or 12. You're growing. But then once you hit the magic puberty stage, then you begin developing into adult forms. Okay, next thing you need to do to be considered alive is you need to be able to obtain and use, whoops, use energy. We call that metabolism. So you probably know metabolism. You think of it as the breaking down of food. Well, not necessarily. Metabolism covers all chemical reactions in the whole body. That's breaking down food and using those bits to build it back up into something else. So if you're working out and making muscles, the building up of muscles is part of metabolism. The breaking down of food to supply the nutrients for those muscles, also metabolism. Plants use photosynthesis to obtain or to get their food. They turn, they use the sun to fuel the process of making food. It doesn't turn sunlight into food. The sunlight is purely the energy needed to get the process started. So plants use photosynthesis, animals, well, we can't do that, so we have to ingest our food. Once we obtain our food, then we use it, and that's through the process of metabolism. Okay, the sixth thing we need to do, we need to be able to respond to stimuli. Stimuli, you may also see the word stimulus. That's just a single version. Stimuli is plural, so you don't say stimuluses. So a stimulus is something that causes us to react. So when someone touches us, that sends a signal to our brain that says, that's touch, that's a stimulus. When light hits my eyeball and I turn it into an image in my brain, that's a stimulus. When I smell popcorn, that is the stimulus that sends the message to my brain to say, hey, I'm smelling popcorn. So a stimulus is anything that causes our nerves to pick up information and send it to our brain. Then our brain sends understands it, deals with it, and then sends out a response as to what we're gonna do about it. So if I smell the popcorn, that's my stimulus. My response, go find and eat the popcorn. Uh, here's another example of a very common um, stimulus and response. The stimulus is when the doctor whacks you on the knee and, and affects that nerve, it goes up to your spinal cord. Most of the time it goes to our brain, but this is a reflex, so it just stays in the spinal cord. And then it comes back down and then it goes to the muscles, tells the muscle to contract and shorten, which causes your leg to jump up. That's your response. So the stimulus, bonk your knee, response, kick the doctor, okay? So we respond to all sorts of things around us. We, um, you know, if we see something, we can respond. If we hear something, we respond. If we taste something, we respond. So we need to be able to do that and we do it fairly well. Okay, number seven. All living things must maintain homeostasis. Homeostasis is a fancy word for keeping your internal conditions the same. Keeping your body at 98 degree or 98.6 degrees no matter how hot or cold it is outside. Maintaining the level of calcium in your blood no matter how much milk you drink. Um, it's just keeping everything stable. So here's the definition of it. The body's ability to maintain stable internal conditions regardless of external conditions. So it's kind of like um, a thermostat in the air conditioner. So right now, it's the summer. I know you're watching this in a couple of weeks from now, but it's the summer and it's pretty toasty outside. And so I've got my thermostat set for 78 degrees. That's like my body being set at 98.6. So I have my thermostat set and it starts getting hotter, gets up to 80 degrees. Well, that kicks on the air conditioner to cool me off. Now, if this was my body, and not an air conditioner, how would I cool myself off if I got too hot? Right, you sweat. And then the sweat evaporates off and that cools you down. Now, same thing if I got too cold, say that the room got down to 76 or my body temperature dropped below. What would happen? Oh, I got those backwards, didn't I? I should have drawn this arrow over there and 
this arrow over there. Oh well, you get the you get the idea. You're smart. Um, so if I get too cold, that's going to tell my brain to shiver or put on a jacket, and that's going to warm me back up. So a thermostat is kind of like our brain in the fact that it picks up the information from our surroundings and then tells our body how to deal with it. So that's homeostasis, making sure that everything on the inside stays the same because anything out of our range would be considered, we would have a disease or a disorder or dysfunction in our body. And the last thing, number eight, uh, in order to be considered alive as a whole, living things need to be able to evolve. Now that does not mean that we all came from monkeys and turned into man. All it means is that we change over time. If you were to take a look at the, a graph of people say 200 years ago, so the 1800s, the average height of people is you know right about there, five foot five. So five feet, five inches. Now we take a look now, 200 years later, average, say for a guy, is about five foot 10. So we have changed, we have evolved, okay? So it doesn't mean that we you know, crawl out of the oceans or that we come from monkeys. All ev evolution, or in our terms, evolve means is to change over time, okay? That's all that is. All right, let me take a peek. I think, yep, that's the last one. So what you need to do, go over your notes, see if there's anything you need to rewind and rewatch, um, highlight, you know, whatever we talk about, anything that we talk about the following day, you might want to highlight that. You could draw pictures to help yourself, however you want to do it. But um, this note-taking experience is yours. It's between you and me. You don't have that kid over there talking or throwing paper balls at you. You don't have the kid who's trying to distract me so I go off topic. It's just you and me, which is great because you don't have to worry about distractions. If you have a hard time writing and listening at the same time, well, it's great. Write a little, press pause, and then when you're done writing, press play. So hopefully this experience will be a little bit better for you because you're going to be more in charge of your learning rather than just uh, you know, being a passive listener. Okay? So good luck to you all. And apparently my cat, come here, wants to say hi. Hi. This is Flick. She's a butthead. Say hi. All right, guys, I will see you tomorrow in class. Make sure you bring your notes so I can check them out for you. All right, thank you.